It is now time to wrap our house in a blanket of insulation. We've got the rock wool installed behind me. Now we've got three inches on the foundation wall. We've got two inches on the above grade walls, which is gonna be bolstered by the insulation that goes inside the wall cavities, which is what most people have in their houses. Um, but here we've got a continuous layer, which is the, absolutely the superior way to do it. I happen to know for a fact that here in Atlanta, our building department has never seen this done before. And probably in the Southeast, no one will do this, but uh, throughout the Northern parts of the United States, at least, and other parts of the world, it's gonna be actually a lot cheaper to wrap a house in an exterior blanket of insulation than to try and fit all the insulation you need to meet modern codes into the cavity. People are having to start installing two by eight framing in their walls instead of two by fours. And that is a lot of wood that's very heavy. Most people are looking at this from a cost driven point of view. And if you're looking at cost alone, this is probably not gonna be worth your while. But for us, number one, we're trying to show people what is possible. Number two, we are located five minutes away from the busiest airport in the world. And I want as much sound deadening properties as I can on the outside of my house. If you have any kind of a desire like that, you would want to look at this as an option. And number three, I want my house to be controlled to an extent that probably most of the people who are watching will never step foot in a house that actually does some of these things. We want our house to be a perfect sanctuary. We're building our forever home. Let's go ahead and do it right. And we know way too much about home performance, the science of homes, building science, whatever you want to call it, to be able to sleep well at night knowing that we did not make some of these choices to go ahead and do things the penultimate way, uh, which is what we're doing right now. So let me show you some of the details that we're working on. Before we proceed with putting the exterior insulation on, which is very exciting, and you might be tending to rush into that, you have to remember to cut the holes that you need to cut into the walls. So we've got the rim joist that you can see behind me here, and we've got several holes in this wall and then other holes around the house. What you see here is the radon vent that's gonna be coming out of the house, and then we're gonna put the radon fan on it out here, and it's gonna go up and wrap around the roof and go out that way and also an exhaust, another exhaust near this exhaust, which is for the ERV. The fresh air intake is at the other end of this wall, 20 feet away, and that's what you want. In general, you're gonna be trying to separate the exhausts and the intakes so you don't have backwashing. You would be amazed at how often that does not get taken care of and it gets totally overlooked. People will put the exhaust and the intake right next to each other. You, know, you need to think about that stuff. So locate them, make sure that they fit into the rim joist, cut the hole in the rim joist, make sure what you are gonna put in there fits. And by the way, what we're gonna have on these ERV uh, terminals is, are these very nice Fantech uh, vent hoods that have the bird and bug screen uh, inside. And so I need to be able to put these over the collars that I'm putting through these holes. And let me show you how this works. I need to be able to seal this up with Exto Seal, which is the um, stretchable flashing tape from 475. Now for a radon vent, it's fairly simple because what we have here is air is gonna be drawn this way. So this collar is gonna grab the inside of something else so that I can tape the entire outside of this PVC. And I had to do something weird where I slid this in. It's a 22 and a half degree uh, street elbow. So I could slide it in from this side because there's no clunky thing on the other side. And then I glued another collar to the backside. So now it's stuck in there. It can't come out. And I've got it twisted slightly so that it's definitely uh, firm. Then I taped around the entire outside of this. I can come all the way to the edge of this. This one is a little different. Because I am having to fit the uh, terminal, the vent hood, over this, I cannot tape down into this pleated area because I need this pleated area to be clear so that I can fit my collar over it. So what I'm gonna do here is use my extra seal tape in a fairly um, exact way. I wanna end up with it stretched all the way around and I'm gonna need to start in the middle. So I've got a full length of it here. I have only peeled off the very tiniest portion of it. The tiniest portion is what I'm going to fasten to this duct as it comes out. So I'm gonna put this at the top. I pre-fit the collar for the vent hood onto this earlier to know exactly how far it wants to sit on it. And I'm just gonna trace that all the way around. I know, it's adorable, isn't it? This is, so this is the nun now. 
Um, and what we need to do at this point is peel off not one, but both of the backings at this point, because we won't be able to stretch it if we don't have back both of them off. Uh, if the outer layer is on this still, it won't stretch at all because it's obviously not stretchy. The tape itself is what's stretchy. Okay, so now I want to start at the top, which is the middle still, and go up with it. And this is just like making a pizza. Stretching it out in the way. Likewise here. By the way, this piece of flashing right here is not a stock thing that you would find at a home improvement center. In fact, I have started to really hate home improvement centers. They never have anything that I'm looking for. Again, I've reached a certain level of eliteness where I'm looking for something so, so specific that no one will have anything like what I'm looking for. Uh, Amazon definitely doesn't have it either. So I'm having to go through some pretty extreme uh, lengths to find the specific components. Luckily, we have 475 High Performance Building Supply, which stocks a lot of very specialty stuff. So this is where this uh, very wonderful tape comes from. This flashing I had to have manufactured uh, at a metal stamping shop. And if you are going to be a serious builder, especially when you're dealing with stuff like exterior insulation, you have to come up with some, some special custom trim pieces. So having this anodized black aluminum cap here was necessary before we moved up the wall because I needed a way to make sure that I could have access to something to hang um, a cladding for this exterior insulation, which is going to be FRP, which is fiberglass reinforced plastic. You'll see that go on later. It doesn't need to go on right now because we've got this lip that we can fasten it to. Now we've got this airtight. It's watertight as well, flashed, uh, and ready to receive the exterior insulation. Now to put the two inch comfort board up against the house, we're not gonna be attaching it separately from these uh, rain screen battens. The rain screen battens are what hold the uh, insulation to the house. So basically what we've got here is a four and a half or a five inch long screw with a giant head on it um, that you need to countersink. And this is something that Matt Reisinger helped me understand not to skip. Uh, if you don't countersink it, it means it's going to stick out a little bit, you know, an eighth of an inch, and then your siding will be a little bit weird when it goes on. You don't want that. Uh, ours is going to be lap siding, and you will be able to tell that. So what you want to do is just start all of these, and then when you put them up, you just drive them straight through the butyl tape behind the two inches of rock wool and into the studs. And you will know if you hit them because you're using something like an impact driver. So we're not going to be attaching our wood siding directly into the structure of the house. They're just going to be attached to this little three quarter inch thick member because these pieces of siding are like 16 feet long. So as long as they're hitting every single one at 16 inches on center, that's more than enough structural uh, support. When you're putting this on, if it was another kind of exterior insulation, I might be more particular with how stuff needs to fit on. But honestly, the rock wool is going to be fine. It's very hydrophobic, meaning it's not going to um, wick water up. And also, it doesn't really matter whether you brick layer it and get the seams to be staggered or not. In many cases, we're just building it up so that it's one on top of the other, one next to the other, etc. As long as those seams are pretty tight um, and you can press them up against each other, fairly easily, you're going to have a pretty continuous insulation layer and that heat is having to fight its way through as much of the same kind of consistent material as possible. Mm -hmm.